Hey, welcome to Beyond Nations, a place where we celebrate global solidarity. It's been over a month now that many of us have been quarantined. Here in Geneva, I'm very lucky to live close to an open, natural space with a forest and a river, but it's been a while since I've seen a real gathering of people together. One exception is that at 9pm every evening, hundreds of people come out of their balconies or lean out the window to applaud and celebrate health workers working on the front line to keep us safe. This episode is about people like them, not exactly for the coronavirus, but for surgery, and not just for their own city, but for the whole world. I learned that there's around 230 million major surgical operations worldwide every year. A lot of us have either had surgery or know someone who's had surgery, and we know how life-changing or life-saving it can be. But millions of people still don't have access to safe, quality or affordable surgery. In this episode, I speak to two doctors, Dominique Vervoort and Godfrey Sama Filippo, working to change that. For me, their story is about hope and solidarity across borders. Although working on the same goal, both Dominique and Godfrey speak about the importance of mutual learning, of respecting that each has knowledge that the other doesn't. They speak about the impact of having a mentor, whether that be a peer from another part of the world, or someone closer to home, perhaps a role model or a senior practitioner who can give guidance. But for me, what resonates so clearly from both of their stories is that despite their enormous individual achievements and the scale of their objectives, both Dominique and Godfrey remain humble and speak about the necessity to remain open and always willing to learn. The story starts with Dominique, a Belgian doctor who completed a fellowship in global surgery and social change at Harvard Medical School and is now doing a master's in public health at John Hopkins University. Dominique was a founder of Incision, a worldwide student network for global surgery. I began by asking Dominique how his interest in global surgery began. So I would say my interest came about when I was a child. Um, I have cousins from Ghana. My uncle married a Ghanaian woman. Um, she already had two children and they moved to Belgium when they were kids, when I was a kid. And we kind of grew up with each other. Um, I learned English from them. They learned Dutch from me. And as we grew up, I learned more and more about their situation um, back in Ghana and, and kind of the environment there. And for me as a kid, kind of growing up in Belgium in a very different environment from the stories that I heard from them is very interesting and, and also very curiosity peaking for me as a child to kind of hear about these differences. And as I went through primary school, high school, and eventually medical school, I always had that curiosity to thinking more broadly um, in terms of the world, but also as I went to get a stronger interest in medicine, um, also in terms of global health and how these differences lie between, for example, Europe and Sub-Saharan Africa. Now, my interest in surgery, I would say, kind of came somewhere in high school, um, mostly given the fact that um, my mom and then uh, other individuals in my family have had several um, healthcare issues throughout their lives. And so we've always been faced with um, the hospital setting in one way or another. Um, I do not have any healthcare professionals in my family, but because of that, we kind of got exposed to it. And for me, it was really impactful to see how, especially in terms of surgical care, what an impact that has on an individual's life. Dominique said that from a young age, he'd compared his own country to other parts of the world. I asked him what he had learned about differences in access to surgical care. As a clinician, especially somebody who's grown up in, in a system here in Belgium where everybody has universal access to healthcare, has universal access to surgery, they don't get impoverished because they have massive bills, they don't get denied treatment because they are not able to afford it or because they're unable to find transportation to reach a hospital. And then kind of comparing that to how lower middle income countries really do not have access to these kind of services, oftentimes even to emergency and essential surgical care, oftentimes very simple procedures, but um, oftentimes unavailable because they don't have the surgeon, they don't have an anesthesiologist, they don't have a clean OR, they don't have safe equipment, they don't have the ability to afford um, the care or even able to afford not being able to work and therefore having to go to the hospital and therefore not being able to care for their families, etc. We know that 5 billion people approximately do not have access to surgical care one way or another. It's really striking to hear kind of 
how invasive and how pervasive the need for surgery is. It's very hard for somebody to live their entire life and not needing surgery. And for a lot of individuals, it's actually life-saving or life-changing surgery, life-saving going, for example, for strokes or um, for malignancies, tumors, etc., to life-changing, for example, for clubfoot or um, very impactful but non-fatal congenital heart defects. And so for me, it's kind of hard to kind of go through medical school, kind of go through life and knowing that somebody else's family, somebody else's parents, somebody else's children, somebody else's cousins, etc., are unable to survive or unable to live the life that they should um, because they're unable to receive this kind of care. I learned that Dominique had worked on surgical care in West Africa and Pakistan. I asked him why he was interested in these places. The reason why I went to work in West Africa and Pakistan last year, so basically 2018, 2019, was because I was doing a fellowship, the World Farmer Global Surgery Fellowship at Harvard Medical School. Um, the different individuals who are working within that program they worked on different aspects, uh, different parts of the global surgery ecosystem or global surgery issues that the world is facing. For me, my interest was kind of dual. In the one, on the one hand, I was very interested in working in sub-Saharan Africa, um, and particularly West Africa because of my family connection with Ghana, um, but also as, an, as somebody from Belgium and speaking French, I know that especially the Francophone African countries have severe um, shortages of surgical workforce, um, access to surgical care, resources and infrastructure, etc. But then Asia, Southeast Asia, they, in terms of absolute numbers, there's millions um, of people who live there who are unfortunately having to go through their lives because they, they can't reach surgical care, they can't afford surgical care. But when you think about global health and especially global surgery as a kind of new field, Sub-Saharan Africa was the poster child of global health and global surgery, and a lot of resource, a lot of attention um, was being pulled towards um, towards improving care in Sub-Saharan Africa. And the first countries to really develop comprehensive plans to improve access to surgical care in in their country, and, and vetted by the ministries of health, supported by um, large funders, the WHO, etc., were in Africa. Um, but at the time that I went through the program, not a single non-African country had developed such a plan or had really committed to such to such a concept. And luckily, Pakistan really had um, the appreciation idea of kind of becoming the first non-African country to dedicate holistically as a as a country and as the individual provinces to strengthening surgical care um, through the ministries of health. That kind of led to the program at Harvard with the Ministry of Health there to kind of connect and and for me to kind of pursue this this interest and this uh, the work in in Pakistan. I wanted to know what Dominique had gained from visiting these countries and speaking to health professionals there. There there's a lot of benefits as an individual, as a clinician, as as well as an academic to kind of visit on the ground and kind of learn the individuals who you're working with, learn with on the ground partners, but especially so learning what the actual needs are. The importance of doing this global surgery and global health work is not about what you can get from it or what you envision of having to be done in a certain setting or in a certain field, but really what are the needs of the, the local partners, the local situation. And in a lot of ways, we can read about it, we can learn about it, we can kind of think about what we think is the right solution, but unless we really go to the front lines and, and talk to the individuals, talk to, talk to patients, talk to clinicians, et cetera, about, depending on what the work that you're doing, obviously, talk about what their needs are, really gives you a better understanding of what you can contribute to ensure that they are able to reach the goals that they want to reach or, or reach whatever that they're projecting. I asked Dominique, what was the point of this work? What did he hope to achieve? Well, I think if we can put one thing only, um, and if it's a very ambitious goal, um, I would say hopefully everybody has access to free, safe, timely, high quality um, surgical care, surgical obstetric and anesthesia care. Um, unfortunately, that's a very ambitious goal, even in a lot of high income countries. If you look at, for example, the US, 
if you require surgery there and, and for millions of, pop of individuals in the U.S. who don't have health insurance, it's a dramatic cost. And most people who don't have health insurance don't have it because they either don't have a job or they just don't fall um, below the poverty line to be able to receive state support, etc. And so we see those issues as well in high income countries, but especially in low and middle income countries where you kind of have on the one hand, kind of these financial troubles, but also um, lack of surgeons, lack of nurses, lack of anesthesiologists, lack of operating rooms, of x-ray machines, of um, ICUs, of consumables, whatever it may be. And there's a lot of barriers to come to um, access to surgical care for every individual worldwide. But I do have high hopes in the sense that the younger generations who are now coming up and as somebody who's just finished medical school two years ago myself and who's still uh, about to enter surgical residency, I am obviously um, surrounded by a lot of very eager, very, very motivated um, individuals. And we have kind of come from the generation and the future generation will be like that as well, where for us, global health is not just infectious diseases and maternal and child health. For us, global health is infectious diseases, maternal and child health but also surgery, but also pathology, but also radiology, and all those things that we generally don't think about when we talk about global health. And I'm very hopeful that with these kind of new generations of clinicians from all over the world who are very motivated in kind of addressing the disparities that we're facing all around the world, that we also have an understanding of the possibility of, of including these complex interventions, these complex but very necessary interventions in, in terms of the global health work that we're uh, trying to push forward in the decades to come. Dominique's goal did sound ambitious, but he's been working on it. He was a founder of Incision. I asked him to tell us more about it. So Incision is the International Student Surgical Network, a network of students, young doctors, residents, interested and involved in global surgery all around the world. We started with Incision, we founded Incision as 2015 to 2016 transition. And ever since now, again, 2020, ever since we've grown to over 5,000 members in over 80 countries. And so it's been quite a surge in terms of uh, members and in terms of involvement from all around the world in this network. And the main goal of Incision is really to convene these individuals, these younger generations who are interested and motivated in improving access to surgical obstetric and anesthesia care around the world, um, but also ensuring that these future surgeons, obstetricians, anesthesiologists um, kind of have the network of peer support, of academic opportunities, of research collaboratives, of advocacy campaigns, of educational workshops and webinars, etc., to really also for themselves to advance themselves in their personal and professional um, careers in terms of surgery and specifically then global surgery. And that was really what the main idea was and still is behind Incision. I asked Dominique to tell us more about what he'd learned from developing Incision over the years. As we developed Incision and as Incision grew, what, what I really learned was that younger generations, students, young doctors, etc., that we really have a strong voice and an ability to enact social change in a variety of means. And as we kind of grew with incision in our efforts in the global surgery world, we often got compliments in a way that professional societies or, or larger global surgery organizations oftentimes didn't really or find it hard to grasp how we were able to be so efficient, to be able to be so loud on social media in terms of our large campaigns in terms of setting up international conferences annually, et cetera. And I think one of the great benefits is as students, we are students and young doctors, we are very eager to learn. We're very eager to contribute. Um, we're also very naive in a sense that we don't really, we don't really get affected by politics. We don't really get affected by our personal agendas. We really just want to connect with others and, and get to know peers from around the world, get to meet our future colleagues from around the world. And that's really helped us with kind of expanding incision, but it also made me learn how we as individuals and as clinicians, um, that we always have to, in a way, stay naive in that sense. Don't um, have too many hidden agendas. Don't try to push many agendas, but really try to think about what is necessary and what is the right thing to do. 
Um, but also second is to stay humble um, throughout this. I think a large part of the global surgery success and in the large growth that the field has seen in the past five years is because pretty much all the individuals who are involved with this are very humble individuals, are very kind individuals who are who make the time to teach, who make the time to listen to students, who make the time to get students involved in research projects, who make the time to connect them with individuals that they know in the interests of their fields or in, in the hospitals that they are working in or going to work in, um, kind of broadening that network, kind of broadening that, uh, that set of connections. Dominique had spoken about the importance of making connections in his global surgery journey. I was able to speak with one of those connections, a doctor from Tanzania named Godfrey Sama Filippo. Godfrey is a physician and clinical researcher in Dar es Salaam and worked with Dominique to help establish incision. I asked him to introduce himself. So my background, I was trained as a medical doctor in Tanzania at the Mwimbili University of Health and Allied Sciences. That is when I, I, I learned about global surgery. I was in, in the fourth year of medical school. Um, it was a small working group under the International Federation of Medical Students Association. They were having a small group on um, global surgery. So I knew that I wanted to become a surgeon back then, and I got accepted to join the international team. That is when I, I, I started learning about global surgery. As the medical school went on, I, I got to meet one doctor. He is a neurosurgeon in Tanzania, and he became a friend and also a mentor. I used to attend most of the workshops that he, had, he, he he called upon. I think that is one of the things that contributed to wanting to become a, a surgeon. I had someone to look at too, and also someone who will always think of me whenever there is a workshop, he will call me, and maybe sometimes, you know, I was a student, I didn't have money to pay. He could just pay for me, and then I attend those uh, training. I had a mentor who I can follow and be a surgeon. I asked him how he met Dominique and came to work with him on incision. So we, we met actually during the formation of the incision. Dominique was the um, coordinator of the group, so I joined as a member. And I remember one of the things that we did together was the organization of the, the international symposium for students in Belgium. He visited my country. I got the opportunity to visit his country. And the common thing that we were doing was, you know, addressing global need for surgical care. In collaboration, I knew there was a component of friendship. So that is where we you build trust among each other. But then there is a concept of uh, mutual learning. Dominic came he he came with um, a good a good num amount of knowledge. I can say even more than mine in research, be in the literature about global surgery. He knew more, but then I knew more of the context. Godfrey had spoken about this idea of mutual learning and his knowledge of context in Tanzania. I asked him to explain what he meant. So, for for example, in Tanzania. What I shared with Dominic that we have a very limited amount of uh, workforce as compared to number of patients that we have, and also maybe our infrastructures are not really very advanced compared to the amount of people that we have, and also compared to where Dominic came from, like the high-income countries. We have maybe few theaters. For example, you 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 go to a hospital where, where we save uh, people who who need obstetric care, obstetric surgical care, who need general surgical care, children's surgery. But then we only have maybe one or two operating tables in a whole hospital. Even the the, the patients themselves may be suffering different uh, different uh, problems compared to those in Belgium or in the UK, and also maybe financing. You know, we it's a it's a developing country, and we. We are struggling with uh, budget constraints, and really the country has to prioritize depending on the available information. And I think this is another thing that I, I always share, that there is a limited amount of information, a limited amount of data, because most of our research maybe have been done in infectious diseases and a few in non-infectious diseases. 
we lack in, we lack enough information on surgical care. Godfrey told me what he was able to share with Dominique and others from his own learning. I also wanted to know what Godfrey had gained from visiting Belgium and being part of the international conference there. That is when we, I, I got an opportunity to meet a large number of people from various countries. So there was a sense of mutual learning, trying to understand that we in Tanzania might be having a certain problem, but maybe the same problem can be affecting other people in a different country. But then uh, creating friendship and network, which are uh, like now long lived. I met a number of people and we still keep working together with them. So it, there is a sense of uh, peer mentorship. We have a different amount of capacity from when, depending on where you come from, knowing that we come from different areas, but then we have our own one unique goal. We want to improve the, the, the we want to improve our world. We want, we, we know that we are, we are bounded by uh, country boundaries, but then we have a number of problems that are cutting across. So being able to create more collaboration, more partnership and friendship with the aim of working together in the future and improving the, the world. I think it's mostly impacted by being open, being able to accept that you come from a place where some things are lacking and to be able to meet the right people who can be able to share the knowledge, to be share, to be able to share their capacities and also you know the the ultimate goal is that we, we want to not not for Tanzania, not for Belgium or UK, but also it is the sharing of knowledge which can impact the whole world as well. I asked Godfrey to tell us what motivated him and gave him inspiration to continue working in global surgery. For me, I think when I felt trusted, someone trusted me and said, you can do this and we can work on this. You know, meeting people, meeting mentors who like know that you can do some things in a certain area, you can be good in this area, that really give someone the motivation to keep moving, keep going on and also keep pushing. You know, sometimes we 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 feel like, okay, I'm becoming a doctor, I'll go and work in the rural area and that's all. I get less pay. But then getting to meet people who can tell you like it is not more it's not only about you, it's also about other people. What impact can you be build? So I learned this uh, much from the group, learning from everyone. Um, but I think it, it, it all came from someone who built trust in me. I was not very special, not comp uh, mean compared to other people. I was just the normal student. But then maybe someone knowing that, okay, you can do this and trust them and be able to work with you and also you see the results. Okay, the, the, the impact now, but also if you focus and see the long-term impact, I think it's something that is very inspiring and something that can, well, gives me power to keep pushing, keep moving on, but also anyone can also gain this. Both Dominique and Godfrey had spoken about the importance of peer-to-peer -peer learning, to respect that these professionals from different parts of the world had things that they could both share and learn from each other. I finished this story by asking each of them what advice they would offer to other medical professionals from their journey with global surgery. My, my advice, I will always say, sometimes you are in the moment where you cannot, you cannot really predict the future, what the future will bring you. For example, so when I think of global surgery, how it started, it started as something which is, was very new, we didn't know whether we would have incision in, in 2020. We knew that we want, this is something where we, we can contribute. This is something where uh, there is a need. So I think people, I, I can advise people first to know where the need is, to also know their strength, their capacity, and their motivation to do that thing. And maybe the results cannot be in a very short time. The results can be seen maybe 10 10 even more years to come but then if you come back and look 
and feel how it started and, and and until it is now i think it's a some kind of fulfillment for people from my end in maybe low and middle income countries to find a network to be able to work with people and also to be able to freely ask if you don't know anything you can be able to ask if you're contributing to a, to a good cause i think anything good can happen i know we used to work as a as volunteers as we grow we can be um global leaders in global surgery at the moment we don't know we are just knowing that there is a problem and we want to address at the as a community it doesn't matter where you come from it doesn't matter who you meet as long as people uh, are ready to help that is a good thing but for my high income friends what i can advise they should be ready to meet people in my end who have a very limited amount of knowledge compared to them and also the issue of being ready to learn uh, a sense of mutual learning should be acknowledged and also the gap in our knowledge should also be acknowledged and we should be able to hold each other's hands me be able to move forward uh, as well so my advice would be very different from somebody who is for example is still a student or is just recently getting involved with with global surgery or aspires to pursue a global surgery career versus for example already accomplished surgeons um but for students i would say first of all don't be discouraged by the fact that a lot of people still say that for example surgery does not have a role in global health um when i started out um i was one of the few people in belgium that really had heard about global surgery as a concept that really thought about it as a as an aspect of global health it may seem discouraging to then think okay why should i be thinking differently why should i as a student be thinking that we can do surgery in a low resource setting when these major these professors these high accomplished surgeons don't really think that is possible or, or don't really seem to be giving it much attention on that side i would say don't be discouraged and try to see which networks exist like for example incision as an na- international network but it also has national networks and trying to find like minded individuals who can help you um trying to pursue that ambition and 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 that goal um and that's also been one of the crucial parts of incision at the start and in the early years was because we had each other and we heard from each other okay look we have these same ideas in different parts of the world and this may in fact be something that we can pursue and trying to then push it forward as led for us to start incision to grow incision start international um conferences and our first international conference was held in Belgium which convened people from 50 different countries around the world and that was for us as incision but also for kind of the global surgery presence presence in Belgium a pivotal moment and then for surgeons or obstetricians and anesthesiologists public health global health research whatever that may be um for them I would really say don't avoid or don't ignore medical students don't ignore them when they seem to be very unknowledgeable yet uh, about some certain physiological or anatomical aspects or um international affairs or global health etc if there's a surgeon or if there's um any um kind of more senior clinician or researcher listening to this I would definitely advise them to take the moment to talk to their students because just a 5 minute talk can really be a highlight and can be a really life defining moment in their careers Speaking to both Dominique and Godfrey left a powerful impression on me. Their vision for changing the world is rooted in humility, an attitude of being open and willing to learn from other people around the world. While they both acknowledge and pay respect to their mentors and the influence their teachers have had in their lives and careers, there is enormous courage and self-belief in their ability to help others. The idea of everybody having access to safe, quality and affordable surgery, no matter where they're from, may seem like a radical idea. But if more people like Dominique and Godfrey work together, then maybe it's just possible. Thank you for listening. Please subscribe to our channel and tune in to our next episode on Beyond Nations.